feel like you're all disorganized and can't get ahead, I'm going to show you how to get organized using a day planner and it's part one of three. I have used a, a Franklin Covey day planner for at least 30 years. I'm going to show you how to use the day planner and never let anything fall into cracks again. This is part one of a three part series. Part one, I'm going to cover how to do daily detailed planning. Part two, I'm going to go over the macro, the big picture using my pocket coach which brings in your vision, your bigger goals, and big projects that you're working on. Part three, I will go over how to organize your workflow and all of the various moving parts, especially in network marketing, and go over a specific product that I was turned on to that I recommend. So let's get into this. Why paper? versus digital. For me, it's clear. Paper allows me to write and there's a proof that when you write something, it connects to the brain. It makes it more real to me when I actually write it down on a piece of paper. I tried to go digital. I'm a digital junkie in many ways and it just didn't work. While this is a big thing that I can zip up and throw in a backpack or something if I'm going somewhere. Mostly it just sits on my desk. I have used the products from franklinplanner.com franklinplanner.com for over 35 years. Obviously I like their products. I've used various kind of day planners. This one here is their original weekly classic this is for an entire week for me that's better because when i bring in my projects off of the pocket coach into the day planner almost everything i'm doing is on a week basis this allows me at the beginning of the week to see exactly what i got going on my brain my subconscious brain even starts working on it way in advance that's why I have chosen weekly. It's got various parts, which I'm going to cover. I use this to schedule work blocks. When I want to schedule a person, I actually use the planner that's in my iPhone. So I schedule everything in my iPhone and even give me a, a, a alert so that I never miss it. All of my people appointments are thus put in my iPhone. Now at the beginning of the week, what I do is to populate mostly the entire week activities. I usually start either on a Sunday afternoon, about 25% of the time. The other three quarters of the time, I sit down and do this Monday morning. That just seems to work for me. I take appointments from my iPhone here and then I will populate them on my day planner right up front to make sure that I don't miss those appointments and be able to get everything that I want to get done in that week. The first thing that I start with at the very top here is to list what kind of day it is. When you get to part two of my day planner, I'll show you a time system that I use where it's either a focus day, buffer day, or free day. And I'll describe that in the next video. That's the first thing I do. Number two is I start filling in and populating my list. There are certain things that are absolute must that I do. Number one, 
my morning devotional. And you'll see, I put devotional, and I generally get it done before 8 a.m. all the way across here. Number two, in my business, I have to invite people. You'll notice that I got an invite, 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 free day, invite, free day. Thus on this seven day week, four days I'm inviting people and I'll invite anywhere from 20 at the least to 50 people to learn more about what it is that I do in the hope that I might be able to help them. The second thing I schedule is follow up. In my business of network marketing, follow up is key. Leaders that do really well and grow a team are constantly following up. Thus, I schedule my follow-ups as you see right here and generally they're right after an invitation period. And I'm following up with not only prospects but customers and my team members. Then, because I do internet marketing and I really wanna add value to people, I do a video blog and generally I'll film that on a Monday or on Tuesday in this particular week I put that I'm gonna do it on Tuesday. Generally Sunday night, I already have an idea what I'm gonna do and it usually takes me about four hours of work to shoot the blog, edit the blog, and type the blog. And then, which is an absolute must, I practice 90 minutes almost every day. Here, it's four days that week. I practice giving my speeches, I practice scripts of talking to people. I practice many different things. Generally, it's always at 3 p.m. every day. I'm still fresh enough, but it's after the day where I need at the beginning of, of my day, the high energy, because I'm my energy at my age starts to reduce but I'm still really good about three o'clock, especially if I put some caffeine in me. Uh-huh. And then I, you know, I populate other things. As an example, here was a free day on Friday the 29th. I just put free day, put anniversary. <clears throat> you can guess what that is. And then there, this was a, a focus buffer day combined because I'm doing some chores and you'll see what that means. But I don't do any chores on these focus days. Focus days are 80% devoted to making money. I like to work in 60 to 90 minute blocks. Been proven through science that the brain works really good in 60 to 90 minute blocks. So when I invite, it's almost always 60 minute blocks and I just blitz it. And then generally from one activity to the next, if there's a break in time, you'll notice here I have it at 10.30. I may have as much as 15 minutes in between where I may answer an email, I'm letting my brain settle down, I'm kind of getting geared up to what my follow-ups might be, and then I get into it. I block my phone, I don't let anybody uh, approach me, I shut my door, my, my wife knows not to bother me on any of these blocks of time because I work at home and yet, you know, there's times you get interrupted at home. I won't lie to you. I always use ink when I write because it's more permanent. That's the way I want this. In the beginning of the week, these are like permanent things. I'm going to get them done. If I wrote it in pencil, I might be able to erase it. But when it's in ink, it seems more permanent. And then if I have to reschedule you know I'm scratching out an ink it looks ugly and I don't like that so I like this clean week where I did everything that I was scheduled to do let me talk about daily task in between blocks of time like here follow-up ended at noon so between noon and 3 p.m. I have a block of time that's when I get my daily task done while I may not list them all here, because this is just a sample for you, I do have other lists, especially when I'm doing chores at home. I mean, I have a big honeydew list that I have to do. 
As an example, on this day I put I had to get an oil change and I wanted to contact my son Kyle. So in between these blocks, I did that. I went, I think I did it in between here, I went and got an oil change on my car. And I listed it as an A. Kyle was a B. A means I absolutely have to get it done that day. B means it's important, but it's okay if I don't. And a C, like right here, means that I could take it or leave it that day. And it gives my mind when I'm in, in between blocks, I know exactly what I need to do because I've got it listed, I pre-planned it. So this particular day, I had two tasks. I got the oil change done because it was an A and I did a check mark. And then this means, this arrow forward, means that I put Kyle somewhere else. Now if you look ahead that week, I didn't put him here. So somewhere in subsequent days, I moved that forward. Thus, when, if I came over here to another day, it would show up. So I never missed doing a task. If somebody says, would you do this for me? Yes, I'll do that. Anything that's like that, I list in these daily tasks. Arrow means I didn't get to it, I moved it forward. So day two here, I put grocery list, A. Because I was gonna go grocery shopping over here before the anniversary day. So I went around my house that day and I got a list of things that I needed to go grocery shopping. I had to order a clock actually. Oh, there's Kyle, I missed it. So I moved Kyle to the very next day. And then when I got into my second day here, it was a buffer day, which is to prepare to have great focus days. I got everything done. I, I got my grocery list, I ordered this clock that I wanted, and then I talked to my son Kyle. This next Wednesday, I had Iron Man book. I wanted to buy this book. I had to call my coach. I had to get my wife's anniversary card, and I had to do a web page change. And you'll see, I got the two A's done, but the B and the C, I arrowed forward. So that's basically how to use this paper day planner. It comes with a whole lot of different things in it. I insert this pocket coach inside. I have a, a, a hole punch that I bought from Franklin that gets it exactly right. This particular uh, issue, you could put business cards in, you can shove papers in here, you can put a pen down in here. Below, I've got a link to Franklin Planner where you can shop their sites. Watch me on part two as I cover how to use the pocket coach. Have a great one. See ya.